what's up today I am gonna be doing something as always let me start by introducing myself I'm James I did a few COVID-19 things last week and the week before about cases today I want to do some economic stuff I just got done doing all kinds of research on some companies as always, I try to save my personal opinions. Of course, I do let them be known a lot of times. But as far as some opinions, I don't try to put them out there. Like if I hate a company, I'm not just going to flat out say that I hate them. I'm trying to fix my beard and stuff too. But um, I'd like to start with uh, Clayton Holmes. Because their post was the oldest about three weeks ago. As always, you will see me with paper. Because I do a lot of research on this stuff. I, of course, will save my personal stuff to last. I'd prefer to go over everything else and then I'll do personal. And I've also got a side note that I will read at the end. But um, as for Clayton Holmes, three weeks ago, they had one employee in Maryville, Tennessee test positive, resulting in a shutdown of that home selling and purchasing center. They, uh, they had to shut it for a couple of days. They had already set up monitoring and watching task force to deal with the novel coronavirus. They had also rescheduled all events and major company meetings and corporation holdings that were scheduled for this month, last month, and next month. Currently, a lot of, from what I've read, a lot of companies currently with their May meetings, they're not necessarily all canceled. They're just, they're in the plan of rescheduling, but if things look better by then, they won't be canceling any of them, won't be rescheduling. They'll say, hey, these dates are still on. As of right now, it's more or less just a, our pen is waiting for the signature. The minute they sign, everything will be rescheduled. But as for uh, right now, it's basically just everything for April and March was rescheduled. Customers can still go to Clayton Homes and purchase homes and view certain ones but their employees will be six feet away from you and anyone that's with you will be six feet away from you and the employee they're trying to keep that in place and while the paper don't say it, i can assure you that every home on that lot is more than likely 90 percent being disinfected every day because they don't want people to sue them over that um Trying to think, make sure that's all. But uh, yeah, all home centers have that six foot order. The next company on this list is AT&T, which recently, as of I think a day or two ago, I forgot what that, I'll have to, don't quote me on none of like on dates because I look at five to six articles for every company. AT&T signed a $5.5 billion loan and they have released a statement regarding their employees saying that with COVID-19, there's a very high likely chance there'll be a lot of layoffs, store closings, various odds and ends related to, you know, cash flow. They're hoping to start making a little bit of profit because they're currently in a... 126 billion dollar mountain of debt from the purchase back in 2018 of Time Warner which became Warner Media and as several already know this virus disease has wreaked havoc on a bunch of cell phone companies internet companies things like that because while they are essential at the same time, not everything they do is essential, so certain parts are closed. Like for cell phone companies, buying and selling a cell phone is somewhat essential, but at the same time, you can about bet that there are some limitations there by each state, each government, you know, all those little odds and ends. 
and then as for the next the next is kind of a combination between a whole bunch it starts with American Airlines I had started with American Airlines because they were the only ones that really released any information they had a hundred flight attendants test positive and Southwest Airlines also did and right now the Airline Association of all employees is actually requesting for the proper equipment like mask and then the bleach and alcohol stuff like that to sanitize all airplanes between flights currently from what I also read it's not mandatory for flight attendants to wear a mask it's recommended but they're not requiring it yet and um, flights in Los Angeles Chicago and there was another city Currently, they're shutting down gates and runways because not enough airplanes are flying. And there's a, from what I've also read, there's a bunch of flights, arrivals and departures that are grounded right now around the world. There are some Americans still stuck out in like Europe, I'm trying to find my camera, Europe, Asia. America, we've got some Americans here in America that can't really get home unless someone drives to get them because most airports are trying to keep people from flying because it's such a tight, confined space. Next one on our list is the rival to the internet company that I'm using. We've got Shenandoah Telecommunications, Chantel. Chantel Company, Chantel Communications. They um, they're located out of Virginia. For anyone that didn't know this, I've had a few around me, like in my little town, that actually didn't know that. And I was all like, "You didn't know that?" I'm like, and they thought it was from. One of them thought it was from Beckley. One thought it was from Charleston, and then one thought that they were from way up north in like the chemical section of West Virginia. But no, they're from Virginia. And for anyone that didn't notice, Chantel is a combination of Shin from Shenandoah from the first four letters Shin, but pronounced Shenandoah, and then Tell from Telecommunications. Anyways, they announced about two weeks ago, about the same time that Clayton Holmes had their employee test positive. This isn't about an employee, though. So far, they haven't had anyone test positive that they've released anyways. But they announced that temporary data speed and allowance increases are being given out to customers due to many users being at home, like myself right now but I'm not a Chantel customer. I've thought about switching, not gonna lie, that's just personal side note. But um, like I said, I'm trying to keep my opinions really out of this. There are some opinions in here of mine, but that was just personal opinion. Me basically saying I'd love to switch due to their speeds. It would allow these videos to come out faster and quicker. Not so much like, you know, oh, 10 videos a day, just most of my videos take two to seven hours to upload depending on size hence why i need faster speeds but anyways back to the little back to the research most of their customers though are home now and they're trying to give out more speed and allowances to basically like if you've got a 300 gigabyte limit and you get 50 megs per second they're trying to make sure that you can either get that 50 megs constantly, no matter who's at your house on the internet, or to where you're at least getting up to that full amount, possibly more. And then the allowance would be like with that 300 gigs, because that's their most common data plan, would be like, oh, hey, instead of 300 gigs due to COVID-19, you get 400 or 350, 325, something like that. They didn't really say how much they're giving on the speed or the allowance. That is something that I've been trying to keep up with because this is what I do. I research companies. I tell the good, the bad, stuff like that. 
which, well, we're getting ready to go over some bad for um, Frontier Communications, FTR on the stock market. Anyways, they announced a um, month extension to their mid-March Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection filing. They're currently holding that off until the end of this month, till the end of April. They've got $17 billion in debt. They're making about $7 million annual revenue. I think, uh, if I remember reading correctly, that was after tax, paychecks, maintenance, all that good stuff. You know, research. But, um, yeah, um, where was that? Oh, trying to find my place. For those of you that didn't know, I, uh, write this in pencil instead of pen just in case you know I go and while I'm researching I see something else that's new or something like that I can erase and make sure I get it accurate and a lot of times the pencils that I use they'll turn out really bright Let's see if I can show you like you can see how some spots are bright and some spots aren't and the spots that aren't bright are harder to read because the I've got a light right here and then another light over over there that's bright both of them are bright and they both kind of shine off of like the insides one of them shines off of like the top part of my um, phone and then of course when they hit this piece of paper a certain way it, paper and paper pencil and light don't mix anyways back to what I was saying they've got 17 billion in debt 7 million in annual revenue after all their stuff is paid out and they've got mounting subscriber losses, especially with the recent 800,000 people that they sold to four companies over in Washington and um, Montana. Which, if you didn't know, anyone in Seattle that had Frontier will be switching to, I forgot the name of the company, but it's one that's been around there, that actually sold most of Frontier, their business, and ironically, they're getting it back. Which is kind of a good thing when you think about it, because it means that local company is getting their equipment and their lines back. Because for those of you who didn't know, most of Frontier's like DSL, fiber, television, satellite, was all put up by, like here in West Virginia, it was Verizon where I'm at and they sold out to Frontier. Most of what Frontier has, they've never upgraded or really had to maintain because it was put in by previous companies, which is what I'm getting ready to go over too. I didn't expect specifically write none of that out in the research. That was just other stuff I had researched and happened to remember. But they, FTR is openly admitting right now after some denial for a little while, that they've had some major failures. These failures are things like the lack of fiber, which where I'm at, that's a really big issue. There's no fiber really in West Virginia for Frontier. I think it said out of 90% of their customers, there's like three or 4% that really has fiber optic. And that was put in by companies like Verizon, Shintel, stuff like that. And Frontier happened to just buy out that section. They've got horrible customer service ratings. Those of you that didn't know. Their, their own hometown. I'm trying to say this a certain way. To not only keep it professional. But to also keep my opinion fully out of it. Their own hometown had gave them a one star rating. Including from the building beside of theirs. They rent two to four floors i can't remember which one it was if it was two or four or three but they rent a few floors out of a office building that's like six to ten floors tall and above and below them they've got a one star rating also from other people that are headquartered there they've uh they also have been lacking in their proper maintenance, like upgrades, you know, installing new things and increasing speeds and installing more servers. For those of you that didn't know, 
servers is how the internet is actually fast like where I'm at they don't have a server close to here for Frontier I think they've got a small one in town but where I'm at it's so far away from it that it only gets one to two megs for download and like 500 kilobytes and upload they're cheap they've got no data limit but with that kind of comes the side effect of further away lower speeds and well all the fails that they openly admitted to but they do have a new CEO that came from dish he wasn't the CEO over there but he was the manager of money and their bankruptcy filing is actually to try and fix these issues with money and to try and reorganize trying to basically get rid of the problems that are plaguing Frontier and as I'm sure many of you are figuring this out from not only me telling you about my research but from watching things like the news or reading your own articles or even working COVID-19 is really putting pressure on companies especially ones like Frontier that already have mounting losses and debt and for anyone that works in companies or works anywhere really you know that the coming days and weeks especially like the fallout and the aftermath where people start realizing how bad the economy has really slipped for companies like Frontier and AT&T that are billions in debt and they can't really make that back really quick that amount of money and debt is liable to really mess with a lot of companies which is why a lot of them are now filing for bankruptcy protection because what that is is that's the government telling them hey you've got protection for so long to keep from dying but in order to do that you got to reorganize change some things change leadership manage your money better make some payments and you have to sell off a certain amount of your assets which is how much the company owns like for instance Frontier I think they said that they've got to sell well the Seattle is one but they've got to sell I think two or three things and do a little bit of upgrading and then the government will be like okay we're happy and then after making payments to pay off the debt the government will be like, you know, the government will be even more happy, basically, and, okay, you gave us some money, we'll relax some on the debt, and you won't have to worry about disappearing, so to speak. I'm watching the time, if anyone's watching what I'm doing over here, too, because, uh, well, you can't see it, but the time's, like, right there on my screen. That's why I quit speaking for a minute, because trying to pay attention, it's at 18 minutes. I'm not sure how much space my phone actually has left right now. But now on to personal. Reality Games Repair and Development Company. Reality Games RDC. Recently announced a shortage in stock and a delayed release date for Reality Drive 2. It went from April 25th to currently, until further notice, there is no release date. It's being worked on, but a little bit slower now. Get to why in a minute. <laughs> With the COVID-19 outbreak worsening in West Virginia here in West Virginia, Reality Games has taken the extra steps and precautions to ensure the safety and well-being of all customers and community by asking things like, you know where have you been have you been out of state have you felt sick are you experiencing any symptoms of this you know questions asked answers studied and if it's believed that it'll be all right and they haven't felt bad in 14 days or anything or they haven't been anywhere in 14 days then there's a very high chance that they'll be accepted and they'll get things sold most sales, though, are currently limited to nearby residents due to being an in-home studio and electronics reseller. Now, for the side note, which I did put at the bottom. So, for those of you that just heard about reality games, we're getting there to the why. And to, you know, how come I know so much about them? 
which those of you that watch this channel and watch their channel already know this, so you're good. That should be about 90% of my subscribers, maybe 100%. Depends on if you watch me enough. Even if you watch one or two videos, you should already know this. But anyways, Cook7039, James Cook, me, I'm not affiliated with any of the other companies mentioned except Reality Games Repair and Development Company because I own, operate, and basically run them. And I make all the decisions. And any information and opinions are all based off of facts and research and sources, which I'm sure you have figured out from, you know, pages upon pages of stuff that you see me doing. And this will conclude another one of the um, kind of news and COVID-19 situation reports that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get more into it, and for those of you that don't know, I'm actually also trying to get back into um, gameplays, tutorials, series, things like that, and Minecraft tours. So, do keep an eye on this channel, because I'm trying to also, not necessarily quit rapping, but it's not really my passion. Yes, I can do it, and I know people love when I do it. Because I'm a diss rapper who calls people out, calls companies out, like I have done Frontier in the past. Like I have also pointed towards other companies and said towards others. But, for those of you that know me well, you know that's not what I'm about. I'm an electronics guy, I'm a game programmer, I'm a gamer. Rapping is just something I picked up. I enjoy it, yes, but... It's just not really my thing. And unless I'm provoked in a rap battle or something, I probably won't be doing too much rapping. Now that's not to say I'll quit, because I'm trying to work out a schedule to where Monday through Thursday I do other things. Friday, write a song. And then Friday evening or Saturday morning, upload it. You know, record it, upload it, do whatever I need to do to it. But whether or not that schedule always works out, as you can probably tell, is entirely up to what my schedule holds. Because rapping is on the lower end of the stick right now. Reality drive is more important. With that being said, though, to keep up to date with anything related to COVID-19, economy, reality games, game development, you know, all the good stuff that I deal with and that I'm doing right now, Make sure to like the video, turn bell notifications on, and subscribe. That way you don't miss none of it. And that way you can also get information about when I upload or anything that I do. And back to all the COVID stuff too. Don't just follow me for things because obviously I'm not the best source for all of it. Follow the Center for Disease Control, CDC, the World Health Organization, WHO, WHO. I still haven't understood that one completely. I've been kind of wondering that myself and you know I don't encourage it a lot but keep up to date with things like ABC News, Today, Fox, CNN don't just watch them though and go off of one channel try to watch two to three different versions that way you have both sides because there's two sides to all stories make sure you get both but with that, I want to thank you for watching. And any questions, you can leave them down there. Hit the subscribe button. Basically, just stay tuned. Because there's going to be plenty more videos to come on this channel. Especially since, you know, I'm stuck at home. With the delay of Reality Drive 2, that also comes from the fact that I am trying to get back into YouTube to give you guys something to do while you're at home. Because Reality Drive 2, even though it might could have been released the 25th, there's a very high chance that it would come out like the first one and stuff. And not very many people have really been too interested in them. So I've kind of delayed it out of the respect that people are going to want other things to do. And hey, look, you watch videos on YouTube constantly. I do it too. Everybody does it. It's YouTube. 
why try to release a game and try to hurry it up to make it a two-year anniversary if it's not even going to be fun? But, you know, this time, honestly, though, I am, I am done speaking. <laughs> but, yeah, do subscribe and turn on the bell. Make sure you got notifications that you don't miss anything. And with that, I do conclude the April... Trying to think. April the, I'm gonna say, I think it's the ninth, the eighth of the ninth. Uh, no, eighth was yesterday. Okay, sorry about that. But with that, I conclude the April 9th, 2020 coronavirus report on uh, on the economy. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next.